Well, I've never done a recording like this, so it ought to be a lot of fun. I'm making bagpipe chanter caps. Each one is about three and a half inches long, and the wood I'm using here is black and white ebony, a simply gorgeous wood. So I mark, uh, I can get about three pieces out of 12 inches or so, and I go on and cut those to length watching my fingers so they don't get anywhere close to the blade. Oh, three equal length uh, blocks that will be turned into chainer caps. These squares are not actually square, so I, I use a little tool to estimate where the center is. And I punch each end. You'll see why I do that in just a moment. So I find the center, or roughly the center, on each end of the blocks. Then I uh, insert one end into a chuck. Uh, by the way, this is a one-way lathe. That's a brand name, 2436. I can turn big bowls and things uh, in 24-inch diameter and also 36 inches long. So I bring the drill bit up against the other end and I slowly advance the drill bit and that's what turns uh, or that's what bores the hole. I'm using 7 8 inch diameter drill bit which all fits all channer sizes that I have seen so far. So this bit gets pretty hot by the way. At this after the hole is drilled, the block is still square. I measure about half an inch down from the open end, and I will drill a hole into the side. I like to go across the grain, put a piece of leather in there just to protect the inside, opposite side of the drill bit, take it out of the vise, and I use a tap and die set and I tap very carefully uh, back and forth. This is for the uh, thumb screw, the brass thumb screw. So after I carefully go in and out and have a thread set or a thread cut into the wood, I at this point turn on center. So I reattach the blank that's square uh, back onto the lathe. Bring the tail stock up, snug everything down. Bring my tool rest. You'll see that in a second. Bring my tool rest up against the, it doesn't touch of course, up against the turning block uh, this is turning about 2,000, uh, about 2,000 rotations per minute, and I use a bowl gouge, a roughing gouge, to start cutting the corners off of the block. A trick to know if it's round is to hold the, the uh, cutting tool up on top of the block if it vibrates then uh, you know you've not cut all of the corners off. So once it's round, I make it really nice and smooth with a skew chisel. Back and forth. This wood is so nice to use because it's, uh, it's so hard. On either side of the thread hole, I make a mark. I've learned that you need to protect that screw hole with thicker wood. So I make a mark on either side of it, cut a notch with the long point of the skew chisel, and then take my parting tool, go down to the final diameter of the chanter cap You can tell the tool is nice and sharp because the 
shavings just peel off. So I'm, this is the short end that will go down over the chanter. And then I just to uh, make the opposite end or the long end equal diameter, I use calipers and the parting tool, smooth it with sandpaper. This is all uh, not time lapse photography, but it, at least you're getting an idea of the different steps. So I smooth it, I round the edges using a very fine parting tool, round over the area where the uh, thumb screw will be just to give it a little more heft. In my earlier designs I had a couple crack because it, the screw uh, through thinner, a thinner wall just wasn't very sturdy. I haven't had any cracks since I've made these thicker. Some more sanding. Using dividers now. These are pretty handy. I make three marks equal distance. And then I use a combing tool. It's actually a thread cutting tool. But it makes such fine uh, ridges that I use it for a combing tool. So I cut combing into the near side and then up against each of the three marks uh, made by the dividing uh, by the dividers. A little close up here. This is actually a tricky part because if you put too much force on <coughs> on the combing tool, it will start tearing away at the wood. So I keep this, all of my tools sharp, but this one in particular is sharp. Then I round over the segment in between each of the combing, and this is forming a bead. So with bagpipes, I try to make it look like uh, simulate what the drones look like with combing and beading. Full comb, full bead. Have to avoid a catch in the wood or I can ruin an entire chain or cap. That's very frustrating. I've done that before. It's nice and smooth. If you hold your hand on it, and put it much pressure, of course, it will burn you. At this point, I'm rounding off the near side that will go down over the chanter. Do a little fine sanding just to make sure everything doesn't have any rough edges. Just doing some final cleanup there. And at the last minute, I thought I could add some more combing at the very top, which I did. Just about all of these chanter caps are unique, and I changed the design. I, after I put a chanter cap on, I just figure, okay, this might look nice. Instead of some of the combing, sometimes I use a uh, little homemade tool that cuts a small cove. I've turned the chanter cap around, put it back in the chuck. I've recentered it. It's very important to keep things centered. The leather keeps the jaws of the chuck away from that raised part where the screw uh, where the thumb screw goes in. And at this point I'm just going to true up the very end, round over the edge a little bit, use the fine parting tool to go clear down to the pivot point. Important to keep this tool sharp. It's called a parting tool because if you're turning a long spindle, you can actually turn it totally in half or cut it all the way through and it'll fall out in your hand. So at this 
I using a, another skew chisel. I've taken the uh, tail stock away from the uh, turning wood. The jaw, the chuck is firm enough to hold everything in place. I didn't show it on the video, but I added some combing to the very end. That's tricky because it tends to wobble and I can ruin things if I'm not careful. And I use a, uh, an oil finish that will be absorbed into the wood. It's a Watco available at any home improvement store. And it really makes the grain in this black and white ebony just pop. It's so much fun to turn one of these and have it turn out so pretty. So it's ready for the brass thumb screw. You can see some of my other chanter caps I've made. This is one of my favorite woods, but I have all of my woods are favorite, especially the African walnut. Hope you enjoyed this.